This video serves to give you an introduction to inverse trig functions so that you're more prepared to do some problem solving in class. We first need to review inverse functions in general. What must be true about a function in order for it to have an inverse function? Well, we take a look at a simple linear function. And let's take a point, let's say 4, 3. And we can invert it, swap x and y, right? And we can reverse all of these points from that line. We'll have a new line that is symmetric to the old line along y equals x. But why were we able to do that? We're able to do that because in order for a function to have an inverse function, it must be either strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. It cannot be both increasing and decreasing. That is also what we know as to be one to one. So for every y value, there's a unique x value, and it passes the horizontal line test. In the case of our parabola, our parabola would not pass a horizontal line test. It's decreasing and then increasing. So in order to get it to pass a horizontal line test, we say let's restrict the domain. So rather than going from negative infinity to positive infinity, we would draw the parabola, let's say starting from x equals 0, and then going to infinity. Now, does it pass the horizontal line test? Yes. Is it strictly increasing or strictly decreasing? Yes. In this case, it's strictly increasing. And therefore, I'll be able to find its inverse. Taking some points and reflecting them over the line y equals x. Connecting the dots, I get this smooth curve. It looks like a square root function, which would make sense for the inverse of an x squared. How does this work with trig? Well, we have our sine x function, which starts at 0, 0, and then has this period of 2 pi, right? And it repeats every 2 pi, does the exact same thing. Well, clearly it does not pass the horizontal line test, which means, as is, it would not have an inverse function. So in order for it to be invertible, we restrict the domain. We let the domain be from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, also known as quadrants 1 and 4. We'll then note that the range will be from negative 1 to positive 1 inclusive. This is all for the arc sine of x function. Now we see it's 1 to 1. It passes the horizontal line test. So if, for example, you were asked to determine the arc sine or inverse sine of 1, you would be asked to find the angle whose sine is equal with 1, referring to your unit circle or to the graph or to your memory. That means that the theta has to be pi over 2. Now yes, it is true that at 5 pi over 2, sine is also equal to 1, because sine repeats as the, the curve goes on and on. However, Notice that 5 pi over 2 does not fit in to that domain of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, so that would not be our response. So now let's take a look at the function cosine of x. 
We recall that cosine of x looks very similar to sine of x because they're co-functions, except that it goes from 0, 1. Here, if we were trying to restrict the domain from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, we'd notice that it wouldn't pass the horizontal line test, so that's not going to work. So instead, the convention is to restrict the domain from 0 until pi, also known as quadrants 1 and 2. In that case, we can confirm that the function would be strictly decreasing. We'll take the domain from 0 to pi, inclusive, and the range will once again be negative 1 to positive 1. When we look to invert this function into arc cosine, we will simply swap domain and range. For tangent, it's going to be a little bit more unique. We will once again restrict from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. But this time note that those endpoints, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, will not be included. And that's because tangent is undefined at those points. Recall, tangent is y divided by x. And if the denominator is 0, it'll be indetermined. So we'll say the domain is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, not inclusive of those endpoints. And the range now is interesting because the range is now not from negative 1 to 1, it's from negative infinity to positive infinity. Again, keep in mind that negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 are undefined for tangent. Let's try an example together from 6.5. So asked to find the arc cotangent of rad 3 over 3. The first thing that I would do is I would rewrite this as arc tangent of the reciprocal, since those are reciprocal functions. For some scrap work, I would suggest taking 3 over rad 3 and rationalizing that by multiplying it by rad 3 over rad 3. The denominator will just give us 3. The numerator will give us 3 rad 3. Dividing will give us just simply square root 3. Okay, so now we're being asked to find the, the angle, some theta, whose tangent is square root of 3. Consulting the unit circle or a table, you'll find that you are at the coordinates 1 half radical 3 over 2. Why those? Remember that tangent is y divided by x, right, since the radii will cancel, so to speak. Rad 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, the 2's will divide, and you'll just have a rad 3 over 1. What's the theta at that location? Pi over 3. So the answer to our question is pi over 3. Stay tuned for more.